Hello and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Monday, it is August 1st, the year is 2022. Whether this is your first time or you are back to visit my channel, I'm so glad that you are here. Tonight, I'm gonna to teach you some quick cards that can be made in five minutes. Mine have a masculine theme, but we're gonna be using some die cuts and masking techniques to make these cards and they can be used in any theme whatsoever. Now I'm gonna demonstrate one for you, got lots of tips too, and I have several other samples to share with you. As a matter of fact, I actually have a bonus project for those of you watching the live stream or maybe perhaps you're back for the replay. Now a couple things before we get started. I'm gonna begin by addressing what I'm calling the elephant in the room. So if you are here returning watching my channel, you're probably thinking, Lisa, what did you do to your hair? Well, I've been on a journey of going gray for the last few months and my transition is complete. Now let's talk tonight a little bit about the stamping. A couple things I want you to know, you're gonna be able to get the free project sheet for these cards down in the video description below when tonight's live stream is over. And I would love to interact with you. Perhaps you'd like to chat here during the live stream or you want to comment when the video replay is available. But in order to do so, you're gonna to need to log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. That is required by YouTube, not of me. I also wanna make sure that those of you here in the live chat know all about Gina Curcio Holly. You'll see Gina's name here in blue. She's got a little wrench next to her name. She's moderating for me tonight and Gina is my daughter. She's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio and she's been stamping for the entire 24 years alongside of me. She's more than capable of answering your questions and providing those of you that are here live with links. Now I have a couple really two important things to cover and then we're gonna get stamping. First is this, tomorrow is a big day. Stampin' Up! is adding 10 new free products during their celebration. I like to say celebration, it comes off the tongue a little easier. But celebration is their biannual sale. Spend $50 on product and choose something from the selected um, product premiere for free. And they're gonna add these 10 things tomorrow, August 2nd, 2022. Please remember several things. There are special item codes for these products for the sale so that they're free. The second is they are only available while supplies last and celebration ends on August 31st. Now the next is this. Party with the Stamp Studio is right around the corner and you have a few days left to join us because you are not gonna wanna miss the fun. The last day to register is August 5th. Head over to my website over at lisastampstudio.com. It should pop up. If you don't see it, click on shop and you'll see the drop down there. All right, let's get started. All right, moving those buttons out of the way. Tonight, I am going to work with this. This is masking paper. Now, this is a brand new product for Stampin' Up! in their annual catalog. And oftentimes, this is one of those things that gets overlooked because we all love the paper and the stamps and the dies. But I have to tell you that I've been playing with it. I'm having so, so much fun. All right, so I've pulled out a piece here ahead of time and I trimmed it down and we're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. And you're gonna notice that these are larger than what you're going to need for a card front and quite honestly, fantastic because the smaller pieces I trimmed off of here can use, be used to mask other things. There are 12 pieces to a package and they are $7. You cannot beat this price. All right, so I did cut this down ahead of time. Now, because I'm gonna be making me quick cards with die cuts and masking, so obviously this is the masking, you're gonna need some dies. And the good news is my various projects tonight are gonna to use different dies to give you different ideas. I never wanna limit you to thinking you have to have one product to make any of the cards that I share with you. So the first is a deckled rectangles. I'm gonna tell you, I was really on the fence with these, and then when I got them, I thought, why did I wait so long? These are fantastic, but let me show you a little bit about what I did with them. So ahead of time, I pulled out a die. Let me pull it out so you can see it here. I made sure that it didn't take up the entire circumference of my masking paper. And let's talk about the size that I recommend. I am going to place this on a piece of basic white cardstock because I'm gonna be doing some masking and some actually blending. So this is four by five and a quarter. Remember your project sheet is going to have multiple pictures of each project. It's gonna have all the cutting dimensions and supplies. I recommend the masking paper is the same size and you're gonna see why when I start doing this. 
You're going to die cut whatever shape that you want. You can see how wafer thin that paper is. It's going to be lickety split and super easy. Now let me put that off to the side. And just to save time, I did that ahead of time. So you're going to see that this is the inside. And then we're going to work with the negative on this, which is going to create what looks like a frame. Now the Stampin' Up! masking papers, I learned a few things about that I want to share with you. They are very sticky. So if you're thinking that this is real low tack, think again. And I will be honest with you, while you might think, oh no, it actually serves multi-purposes. I found that when I was doing some stenciling or masking on plastic or wood, that that extra tackiness was really a blessing because it did not slip. Where others are meant specifically for card making, this can be used on all different types of textiles. But I'm going to give you a little tip on how to make sure that doesn't rip your paper. So I'm going to bring in my little grid sheets here just to protect my work surface. And the very first thing I'm going to do is very carefully pull off that paper backing. Now I'm going to tell you right now, because they are sticky and we have a tendency to pull quickly, you don't want to distort or rip whatever you've die cut. Okay, so let's go around the outside here and you're going to see I'm working very carefully. I did find too that I could use this more than once. How? Well, go ahead and use a piece of wax paper to tack it down or you can actually tack it down to your stamp case. I like to be able to use them multiple times in a row. That's just me. Now, you can take this sticky side right to your jeans or your shirt to de-stickify it. That's a new Lisa word. That lint is going to help break down some of that tackiness. But if you don't want to do that, I want to give you another option. This is called an embossing buddy. There's an anti-static powder in here. It's part of the embossing toolkit that I love. And I have used this for lots and lots of things. Great when you make boo-boos and you got to pick up that sticky spot. So guess what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go over this lightly because I found the first time I used too much powder. And again, very, very tacky as you can see. And I'm going to just add some powder to this to try to break down some of that tackiness. We don't want this to rip our paper. That's for sure. The masking paper, like I said, is fantastic for other textiles as well. And believe it or not, now that it's August, uh, the holidays are going to be soon upon us. And as crafters, we like to begin a little early, don't we? Okay, so now that I have that little bit of tackiness broken down, I am going to go ahead and take that frame and I'm going to do my very best to mirror this over the cardstock that I'm going to be using. Press around the inside of your frame. You don't have to press the entire thing. This is the area that we're trying to protect is around the inside. I'm going to go ahead and move this now over to that scratch paper, but you might recall that there was powder in here. And if you're like me and you tend to be heavy handed with a lot of things, you've got that powder everywhere and you don't want that in your ink pads. This is just part of a Swiffer dry cloth. And I'm going to tell you what, cut some of those up and put those in your stamp or scrap room. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be like the best thing. <laughs> it picks up all that stray lint and all that powder. Great for embossing powder and glitter as well. So again, you're going around the inside of your frame. Now I'm going to do some masking of obviously here that die cut is going to create a frame for me. I'm going to move over to Pacific Point ink first. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and I'm going to take out a clear block. Now I am going to use a blending brush. This one's dedicated to my blues, my darker blues. I don't like to put it right in my ink pad because I find it just sucks out the ink and I kind of waste it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my clear block as my palette and I'm going to tap a little bit of ink on there. This ink is very pigmented. So I know a little bit is going to go a long way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that off to the side. I am going to take my brush and I'm going to load some of that ink. But look at that. It's actually smeared the pigmentation I've picked up, which means it's not wasted on my brush. So I can go back and continue inking it. I like to rub off because you can see how dark it can be. I want to be able to control that. For this first section, I want you to work just in one corner, whatever corner that may be. So this is one reason why I like the masking paper to go to the edge of the cardstock, because if you're excited and you start blending and you go outside this edge, you're going to end up with blue where you don't want it. So I like to cut the masking paper the same size as my cardstock. Now I'm going to brace my hands here. But I got a better way. Let me talk to you about this. This is my artboard. Now you may have seen me use it before because I absolutely love it when I'm watercoloring. It contains the mess, super easy to wipe off. It's very thin so it slips right down inside my drawer. This is going to be found in my craft room favorites where I linked it for you in case you're interested. 
head over to my website, click on shop, and then craft room favorites. And you'll see a bunch of things in there that I use with my Stampin' Up! products. This is going to help me so I don't have to hold that paper down. So let me move that ink pad out of the way. And what I'm going to do is I've rolled up a piece of low tack tape here. This is that low tack frog tape. I've got that also linked for you. I am going to put this right on top of here and I'm going to mash that down. Now I don't have to hold it because it's going to hold it in place. So we're going to come back over to here. I've got my brush already loaded. I'm going to hold it by the head. Because I have really bad basal osteoarthritis, it's very, very difficult for me to grasp. But by holding it gently from the side, not only do I get some control, but I'm able to comfortably hold the brush. So another great tip for you if you're struggling with arthritis like I am. Another thing about this masking technique that you may not notice while you're actually adding ink is that when you go to lift the paper, it's going to look a lot darker than what it looks like while it's masked. I don't know why that is, but it always happens that way. Go light-handed. Remember, if you're doing this and you want to lift up a corner and take a peek, you can because of the masking paper. Be careful not to rip it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit more pigmentation here. Now, the other samples I have to share with you have various different tones tonight and various different color combinations. And so that you can decide how heavy or light that you want this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stretch this up a little bit. And again, we're working in that corner. And you can add more if you choose. The other reason I like putting the ink here on the block versus picking it up off the ink pad with the brush is if I want to go to a darker blue now, I would not want to put this in my ink pad, would I? I can certainly brush off as much as I possibly can. But by picking up the darker blue ink on a different block or the other side, I'm guaranteed not to muddy up those colors. Okay, what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to take that right here on my scratch paper and give that a good wipe. And you're going to see that it's got some pigment on it. Just off camera, I've got my Stampin' Scrub and I'm going to go ahead and clean that off. I'm just going to close that. And then I've got a rag here. I'm just going to dry that off. Now we're ready for a different color. And this time I'm going over to Highland Heather. Very, very important when you are doing some blending that you remember that two colors mixed together will often make a third color. So I'm gonna go ahead now and what I'm gonna do is pick up that Highland Heather ink here. Again, this is a lighter color. I am going to pick a different spot here because this is more than likely wet and I don't wanna mix those colors. So I'm just gonna test it to make sure that it's not too strong. And with this anchored onto my artboard now, what I can do is I can go ahead and I can add some color. I want to make sure that I am overlapping some of the first color. This is why it's really important that you are careful about what colors that you choose because I have done this before. I've added oranges and browns and got a really nasty brown color. So you want colors that are going to be easily blended into a third shade. Again, I'm going to pick up some more ink here and I'm going to run this over here and just add some more color. I do not want to cover the entire area. Again, if you choose to, and I've got one that's done that way, you certainly can. But I want this to be a partial mask. So I'm going to add a little bit more color here. And of course, with the brush, if you're not doing a perfect circular motion, of course, I'm not either. You're going to have light and dark areas. You might even have some pounce marks, but you know what? Don't worry. It's so, so pretty. All right. I think you get the idea. When I'm all done, I'm going to do the exact same thing here that I've done before. I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to take that off to my Stampin' Scrub, and then we are wetting and drying, and I'm going to close up that ink pad. Open ink pads are a recipe for disaster in my studio. All right, now let's talk about this. When you go to pull this up, you're going to have your double-sided tape here. That was that low-tack tape. I leave that right on top of my artboard so that I can use that again, and I didn't have to brace my hand on there to hold it. One thing I absolutely love. What you're going to have to do now is take the mask off for the next step. And I like to use this. This is my take your pick tool. So I'm going to come up underneath here and I am very carefully just going to release that paper. Now, if you're going to use this same mask over and over again, you're going to want to be careful not to rip it. Because remember what I told you, we add a little powder there so it wouldn't be too, too sticky. In my case, I'm probably not going to use it again because I've been making a bunch of these all day. So I'm going to start on my corner here. And go ahead, Lisa, and try to lift that up. Again, because of my arthritis, I'm always very, very careful with my fingers. I'm just going to release that. This came out of my Take Your Pick tool. Did you know that it has dual ends and that they're interchangeable tips? 
I absolutely cannot live without this tool. All right, so let's go ahead and let's release this. I know I'm not gonna use it again. Obviously, you're gonna be very careful. The tip here is to move slowly. You don't want to pull very, very quickly. You want to take your time. So I'm going to work all the way around the edge. Remember, if you're going to reuse this, work from the inside and very carefully lift. And again, any shape is going to work and my other samples are going to show those to you. All right, so there we go. We now have our cardstock. All right, now we've got to do the rest of the stamping, right? For this part, I am going to recommend that you use a pierce mat. This is the best few bucks you're ever going to spend. I absolutely love it. If you're like me and you struggle to get a clean impression when you stamp, this is fantastic. I'm actually going to turn it this way to give a little help to my hands. And now we're going to use black ink. My black ink of choice is the Tuxedo Black Memento. Any black is going to work because we're not going to do anything. We're going to be stamping solid. So I'm going to pull out a stamp set called Let's Set sale. I had really thought I pulled these out beforehand. They are photopolymer, so let's go ahead and pull out the pieces that we're going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and take this part of my sailboat, and then of course there are two sails. I'm sorry you had to watch me do this. I thought for sure I had all these mounted, and I guess I didn't. There's an image here of some little birds, and of course we got to have a greeting, right? So I really like this one. It says, Adventure Awaits. So I think it makes a great guy card. And I'm actually kind of glad I didn't mount these because believe it or not, I get quite a few emails from people asking me, what's the best way to mount these, the easiest way? So I'm going to show you. So what I do is I lay the photopolymer stamp. Now it's face down. So this is the flat side. I'm going to take my block and I'm going to push so that it sticks to it. The reason that I do that is I know that there are oils and lotions on my hands just naturally. And I don't want them on the front of the stamp, which can impede on the ink. So all I'm going to do now is just kind of tap those on there and get those all locked in place. And if you hear that noise in the background, that's because I have multiple blocks because I stamp so often. And then there's one. And then this is going to be our birds. And let's go ahead and mount that one here. I like to leave them face up on my work surface so that it's easy for me to identify the direction. Now that's important because we have two sails. Going back to that black memento ink, the pierce mat is underneath. We are not going to do all the stamping where you think we're going to do. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start with the actual mast and the boat itself. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to ink this up in the black ink. Now you want good coverage, which is one reason I want to use the pierce mat. I am going to place this, oh, probably about here. So I'm going to leave it hanging off the edge a little bit of that blended area that I've masked. Okay, so now we've got that. I'm going to switch over now to what's going to be the front sail for my sailboat. And we're going to ink that up. That pierce mat's going to make a lot of difference in your stamping. Now I'm going to do my very best to keep my head out of your camera view, but it is photopolymer, which does make it easier for you to line up. Okay, next we've got that other one and I'm going to hold it over to get an idea of placement. Let's go ahead and ink that up as well. And again, we're going to keep my head out of your camera view. We're going to line that up on that mast as well. Do you see how this hang right outside the edge of what we actually colored. Wait till you see how this comes together. I told you this was a five minute card. I wasn't kidding. Here are our birds, nice and small. And because of their size in relation to this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp them up here. Do you guys see what I just did? I had ink on my finger and I got it on my card. It's okay, we're gonna fix that together because I don't do anything perfect. And if you're like me, you need those little tips. Here come the words. It says adventure awaits. We're gonna ink that up and I'm gonna hang these off the edge as well. All right, believe it or not, this is kind of it. But let me give you some other tips and let me give you some other samples and let's talk about this. So there are a couple things that I wanna tell you about. The first is a sand eraser. Now you may or may not know about this product, but quite frankly, I can't live without this thing. Um, I have them linked for you in my craft room favorites. I don't just like them to try to remove boo-boos. I actually like them to lift color sometimes. So if I want to lift color in various areas, which is wonderful for snow banks and sand, this is a great little tool once you've applied your ink. Sometimes it'll work well for black and sometimes it won't because that is really a pigmented color. I like to go back and forth and see if it's actually going to reduce that color without marring the paper too much because obviously we don't want to mess all that up, right? 
You can see here though, that it really didn't do such a good job because it is black. So I'm gonna give you some more tips only because I've already messed this one up and I wanna teach you what I do. This is a white chalk marker. Stampin' Up! no longer sells this. I know it's a big boo hiss because I bought a bunch of them specifically for this. I'm gonna come in here to my grid paper. You see that little black square? This is where I like to get my chalk marker started to make sure that it's flowing well. I can actually dab on white right over this and it's going to virtually erase it, okay? So I'm gonna leave a little dot there so we can talk about the next option. So a white chalk marker is something you can use. The next is, and I'm looking for it, is a white gel pen. I think I have this link for you too in my craft room favorites. The consistency of the white in both of these is quite different. And again, you wanna get it started. I tend to actually like this better, to be honest with you. The chalk marker is gonna need some time to dry, but you can do the exact same thing. I like little dots versus coloring because I find it's a tad more forgiving to the eye. To be quite honest with you, you know what I would do? I would take this back into my trimmer and literally cut off about an eighth of an inch, but we gotta be real careful down here, right? So obviously an embellishment is a good idea as well. So let's go over to the card base and then I can't wait to share these other samples with you. You're gonna want some color coordination and this is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is because of that color coordination. So this is Pacific Point, which matches the exact same ink that we've just used. I did score this cardstock in half before you joined me. Let's go over that with your bone folder. Love that for that nice crisp crease. The next thing I love is my silicone craft sheet. So if you've been here before, you know all about this tool. Adhesive liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to it, which means it's going to keep my work surface from getting all sticky and yucky underneath me. And then I have to always fight that little sticky spot all night and all day long while I'm trying to craft. So then this now is going to get adhered here, leaving a small margin of that color all the way around. There is no other layer. There's no other use for dyes. It is super simple and super quick. Now, I'm going to show you this one, but I'm going to show you the first one that I created. This is the one that's going to be in your project sheet. Do you see the difference in the intensity of the color and the difference in blending? So no two cards are going to be alike. This one, I was more heavy handed. I added more color. I added more blending. I brought the blue up just a little bit farther because remember, when you blend colors together, you're going to get a different shade. All right, so here are the first two. And as I promised, I've got several others for you. Here is the next one. Isn't this pretty? It is so stunning. I do want to move you in a little bit closer so you can get a little bit better view. Very simple, great masculine card for any occasion. It would be awesome for retirement. Let's talk about the colors that I've used here. I used my blending brushes again, and I used crumb cake. Do you see it here at the bottom? Then I used, believe it or not, Calypso Coral. And again, I blended these together. So it took this coral color and it turned it more orange, didn't it? And then to get that really beautiful horizon look, I blended once again using Mango Melody, which is the yellows that you see blended. So this coral color turned really more orange. And that's really what I was trying to explain to you when you blend colors together. This time I added some very simple linen thread Set definitely left the circle area of my die open so that that moon would be very predominant. I find that this technique works well with silhouette images. So you want something that's solid or almost all solid. And this is the stamp set. It's called Paradise Palms. I've used it quite a bit lately. I am really, really liking it. It's super easy to use. All right. The next card that I want to share with you is this one. Again, you might be wondering, is that masculine? Well, you know, I showed Bob the Builder and he said, absolutely. Looks just like a wine bottle to me or like, you know, like a mug of some short. And they just put some ferns in it. I don't see why it's not masculine. I said, okay, perfect. Instead of a circle, or in this case back here, remember we used those decal rectangles. This time I used an oval. Now the colors for this one, you're going to find very, very interesting. The first color is soft sea foam. It's like a baby, baby pastel green. Really, really pretty. But believe it or not, I also use Bermuda Bay. The blending of those colors again almost makes it look like I have more of a neon green here, right? And again, that black silhouette image is all you need. Now, this stamp set comes from Bottled Happiness. 
fantastic images. And then there's fill images for the outlines if you'd like. Really great. And this has a coordinating punch for this bottle. So if you love punches, this is lots and lots of fun. Um, I have an entire PDF tutorial library and I've got a whole slew of cards on this available in there if you need some more ideas. All right, so that's giving you some more, but here is that bonus project we talked about. And this one is a real big wow and it's way different. Do you see the difference in the blending and in the embellishments? For this one, I use some glossy dots and I really, really like these they're in, in the in colors. Because they have an iridescent backing to them, they really pick up lots of different colors. These are a lot more subtle, aren't they? Which means I left lots of white areas in them. This one I purposely did not. So heavier blending. But wait until you hear the colors that I used for this one. Not at all what you think. So for this, I started with Mossy Meadow. Look at that. It's really an army green, isn't it? And it is, but I used it here at the bottom to get that deep intensity for my seaweed images. Then I went in with Granny Apple Green, which is a really happy summer green color, which is where the cardstock coordination comes in. And then finally, I knew I wanted to do a seascape, so I needed some water level. So I went right back to that Pacific point that we used over here on the very first card. And then this time I used a die set that's called Layering Dioramas. This is another one that I held out on for a very long time and did not purchase. And I am so glad that I did. So there's graduated sizes, just like that of the deckled rectangles, which means you can do layers for your cards as well as this die and masking tip. But isn't this pretty? Now, let me tell you two other things about this card that I wanna point out. The stamp set is called Whale Done, and there is a coordinating punch for this whale. Fantastic use of that stamp set as well. Great for masculine cards, of course. And look at these. These are the adhesive backed sequins and gems. These are in the new mini catalog. And frankly, I think they're well overlooked. The colors here are actually very, very iridescent. They are sequins, so they're very flat. You can see that these gems here at the top have a little bit more faceted edge to them, but they're lots and lots of fun. And that's what I used on this card here. So just kind of going to go over these with you again. So these are the ones we've got here. This is the one that's going to be in your project sheet. This is the bonus card. So that's not going to be in the project sheet. And then this is the one we made tonight. And so you can see the difference of intensity of color there. I would absolutely love to know your favorite. Would you do me a favor and leave me a comment below? Just think of all the different silhouette stamps that you can use. Now I want to give you one more tip. Let's say you're a big fan of outline images and you're like, I don't have anything solid. Guess what? Go grab yourself an outline image in a black marker and color it in. 90% of the time, an outline image can be colored in solid to appear as a silhouette. So experiment. Start on a scratch piece of paper with your outline image and color it in with black and see if it gives you the result that you're looking for. All right, now, a couple things before we go. Those of you that want to stick around, we're going to do a live Q&A at the very end. But I want to make sure that you know that I offer exclusive and generous ordering rewards to my customers. You can get all that information over on my website at lisastampstudio.com. While you're there, check out that PDF tutorial. But more important, scroll all the way down to the bottom of my website, and you're going to see the word subscribe. I want to add you to my free weekly e-newsletter where I provide a tutorial project not shared on my other platforms. It is no frills. I would love to have you join us. Make sure that if you enjoyed tonight's video that you give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. It helps me immensely. And then do this. Mark your calendar because next week's live is actually going to be on Wednesday. That is August 10th. So I'll see you a little bit later than normal, but it's going to be worth it because this fun fold, I think beats almost all the fun folds. I think sometimes I say that, but this one keeps getting better and better. And I'm going to give you lots of alternatives. And a little spoiler alert, it also has a masculine theme. So if you're like me and you need masculine card ideas, you're going to want to make sure you come back to visit me next Wednesday. All right. For those of you watching the replay, thank you so much. Perhaps you'd like to stick around for the Q&A. So if you would start writing your questions here in the comments, and then I'm going to bring over my mouse so I can pull those up here on the computer. Let me grab something to put my mouse on, and then I can answer some of your questions here in the live stream. Thank you. Thank you for all the sweet comments. 
All right, just looking for your questions because I know there's a delay between when I speak and when you hear it, and of course, when you type and when I can reply. All right, you guys love the palm tree and the sailboat. I love knowing which ones are your favorites. Love the turtle card. Oh, and thank you for the sweet comment, Michelle Martin. I really appreciate it. <laughs> you guys are so cute. All right, I don't know if I see any questions or not, but you know what? Oh, here's a question from Carol. Carol's question is, will you be doing a tour of your craft room? Ter Carol, I've already got one. I did it when I first moved in here two years ago. Here on my YouTube channel, search craft room tour with my name, and you'll be able to find that very, very easily. If you can't, give me a shout out over on my website, and I'll give you a direct link. Uh, you guys like the stale boat. I'm trying to catch, how do you choose which colors to blend, Debbie Rhodes? Excellent question. So I come up with the stamp set that I'm going to choose first. So for instance, on my sailboat card, I knew I wanted to use the sailboat. So I decided, well, it definitely needs to have water, right? So I knew I wanted a blue. You want to make sure you're going to pick colors together. They're going to make a pretty third or fourth color. Really, really important. I think we talked a little bit about that when I did this card. So I usually choose the stamp set first. So it determines the grounding color of my image. That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking it. Um, I'm trying to see if there are any other questions here. Okay, here's one from Jacqueline. Hi, have you used the masking paper on detailed dies? I have not. I really like the masking technique with my dies to create frames and obviously for masking words, that type of thing. I haven't, but now you've challenged me, so I think I have to try that. All right, I'll take one more question before we go. Um, Cheryl Cantor, excellent question. Do the sticky back gems stay on good? They do, and I'm going to tell you why I'm trying to grab them because I made a mess here. And again, super shiny, so not really easy to see here in the live stream. But I will tell you, they do, because Stampin' Up! puts an individual glue dot on the back of every single one. And you know, if you've ever tried to pull off a glue dot when you've made a mistake, it's sometimes impossible without a little pull, right? So yes, I don't find any problem with them whatsoever. Once you put them on your project, Give them a press to create a really good adhesion between the gem and the paper with that glue dot, and then you are going to be set. All right. Thank you all for being here with me. I look forward to having you join me next Wednesday for a fun fold card. Gina, thanks for all your hard work tonight. I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.